Fora TV. The world is thinking. Face to face, they would praise each other. Kissinger would tell him, Mr. President, without you, this country would be dead. During the Watergate crisis, Kissinger pushed as hard as he could to try and preserve Nixon's presidency. Kissinger was not part of Watergate. He didn't have anything to do with it. But once Nixon was on the griddle, he was trying to save him, trying to preserve his presidential administration. And he speaks to him in ways that I would think at this point might embarrass him. He talks to Nixon about the, those bastard traitor Democratic senators who are trying to do you in, and he is as supportive as all get out, you see. That was face to face. Behind their backs, they could not have been more nasty to each other. <laughs> to begin with, Nixon didn't know Kissinger. When Nixon appointed him as national security advisor, all he knew was that he was a well-known, distinguished Harvard professor with a track record of uh, famous publications about international relations and nuclear weapons. And Nixon wanted, above all, to be in control of foreign policy. That's why he appoints William Rogers as Secretary of State. He doesn't think Rogers will have any clout or influence, and he's quite right. Rogers was not practiced or uh, uh, in the least influential in making foreign policy. He thought he could control Kissinger as well, that he was an academic who would be no match for this very experienced politician, Richard Nixon. He should have known about the anecdote that people on the Harvard campus used to tell about uh, Kissinger. The story goes that one day in the summer, Kissinger walked out on the campus, he was teaching a seminar, and one of his assistants was sitting having coffee with a young, attractive English woman who was in the seminar. Kissinger went up to them, starts chatting with them, and she was very cold to him, very cool. And he was irritated and said, why don't you like me? And she said, because you're a fascist. And he said, a fascist? Why, I was in the invasion of Belgium. And she said, really, with which army? <laughs> <laughs> Nixon quickly learned that Kissinger was driven to gain power. Let me quote from one of these taped conversations. He's talking to H.R. Bob Haldeman. And he says, Henry's personality problem is just too goddamn difficult for us to deal with. God damn it, Bob, he's psychopathic about trying to screw Rogers. Haldeman agreed and warned that if Kissinger, quote, wins the battle with Rogers, he may not be livable with afterward. Nixon thought he would become, quote, a dictator. Did you know that Henry worries every time I talk on the telephone with, everybody, with anybody? He feels he must be present any time I see anybody important. Nixon complained that Kissinger had all these NSC discussions about, quote, every goddamn little shit-ass thing that happens. He has too many fucking meetings. They go on and on and on and on about crap. <laughs> the president talking about his national security advice. Now, he did at this point begin to understand that Kissinger had as strong a drive for control, influence, power, as Nixon did. Indeed, the joke would make the rounds that one journalist said to Kissinger, Dr. Kissinger, how do you feel about the fact that the Constitution doesn't allow you as a foreign-born person to be president of the United States? And Kissinger half-jokingly said, yes, but it says nothing about my being emperor. <laughs> it got back to Nixon, and he... <laughs> He, he nodded with understanding, you see. <laughs> Nixon's resentment of Kissinger was played out in the fact that he would, behind his back, call him my Jew boy. And he would taunt him as best he could, as much as he could. Uh, they'd be in a meeting, and he'd say some ugly things about Jews, and he'd turn to Kissinger and say, isn't that right, Henry, isn't that right? <laughs> and Kissinger said, 
would say, well, Mr. President, there are Jews and there are Jews. <laughs> or they talk about the Middle East, and Kissinger would give his opinion, and then Nixon would say to the uh, group, the National Security Group, now can we get an American point of view? 